did not get a whole lot of grading done, so I would try to bust those out this evening. Um, so if you haven't turned in your math journal, just do so. You don't have to do it right this moment. If you still want it for class, you can keep it. Otherwise, just get out with like a clean sheet of paper used for class today. Um, homework, this one, because I have your math journals, I'll be forgiving with like it doesn't have to be in your journal, obviously. Just do it on a clean sheet of paper. So homework today is 21 through 26. We did not have homework Friday, so I think we're just going to dive right in. Yeah, we're back in CC2. Yep. We're back in CC2 for a long time. For like chapter 7, 8, and 9. <clears throat> we'll be here for a while. Alright, is there anybody who would like to read? I'll read. I'll read. I'll read. I'll read. She's already set and ready to go, and you gotta take a moment and get yourself ready. Yep. Yep, in chapter five. Hey, hey, hey. Izzy's reading. So, thank you very much. As Izzy just so clearly read for us, let's make sure that even though we don't have our math journals, we're ready to go. So we should all have a textbook out and open. Izzy was reading to try to give you time to do that, but some of us aren't really putting much effort into this right now. We've been working with easy percent values. Things divisible by 10, like 20%, 40%, 70%. Those are easy to work with because they're multiples of 10. Hey guys, just get a 7th grade book. It really doesn't matter. The fact that it's yours only really matters if you're taking it home. In class, it doesn't really matter. Now we're going to start working with more difficult percents. Like 6.3 or 84 and a half or really awkward things. So, today we are going to put this all together with things that we've done before, some things that we haven't done, some things we started last week, like with our little toys and the data that we were collecting from those, and we are going to solve some problems. So, in 7.16, we have Dana training for a bike race. Now, what's interesting is they tell us that Dana had ridden three-fifths of an hour, awkward way to talk about time, but three-fifths of an hour, had to stop to fix a flat tire. How many miles would he had ridden when stopped. Well, so how many miles had he ridden at that point? When he stopped, how many miles would he have already ridden? So, set up in your notes a really quick, easy diagram line. So, not really like a number line, but a portion line. We know. His normal riding pace, which is pretty fast, 25 miles per hour. That's a normal riding pace for, for Dana. And that's constant. So what we know when we build this portion line, everybody should be building this in your notes, is that the entire one hour would get him the entire 25 miles. Now we broke this hour into what size pieces? Fifths, and he's ridden three of them. You and your partner take a moment to figure this out.
you guys told me we broke this up into fifths. Right? Even though what we're trying to solve is three fifths, make your life easier. Think about getting one of your portions first and then working from there. So Izzy, I would not let you continue to talk. What now would you like to tell us what you're going to say? Well, how'd you get there? Oh, we got a little loud there. So I know someone else probably missed what Izzy said. Izzy said 25 is divisible by 5. We can figure out what a fifth of it is. So that portion would be how much? 5. Right, so if we know that one of the portions is 5, then we deal with knowing that we have 3 of those portions, and this whole section will be how far? 15 miles. Make sense? Boondabar. Boondabar is wonderful in German. So we can apply that same type of knowledge when dilating. A dilation is when we change the size of something but keep the scaling. It's like a stale car matches what a real car would be, but everything is shrunken down by the same rule. So here the new shape is going to be three fifths of the old. Um, I remember this from a math problem where they were like, um, a homework problem. Yeah. Yeah, we had this for a homework problem where they were trying to like make the the car uh, this this oh, uh, yeah. model car. Yeah. They had to yeah. Make the model yeah. Car with like, and and yeah. Yeah. So, anyone remember an equation that we talked about last week that might be useful in situations like this? Is it? Ooh, our dirt equation. Distance equals rate times time. Now, this is how much he was supposed to cover per hour. Right, his rate would be 25. Our time here is three fifths of an hour. We could do this math just as easy. So, how then can we deal with making an equation for this? I want you and your partner to relate the new shape to the old shape using an equation. Try this out. Because then, what if they tell you? This side length, the bottom, let's say this is not 25, and you had to find out what this then was. Not as easy. Obviously, we just solved it. If it's 25, you should know that this is going to become 15, right? Because of 3 fifths, like we just did. But how do we write that as an equation? Let's take a moment. New does not equal old. Rachel, you got it? What's our equation going to be? Yeah, so new is going to be three fifths of the original. Because I could say that verbally. What happens when you forget to finish that one? Oh, 
No, if they actually need me, they'll leave me a voice. So, if we wanted to find some side, like let's say I think I have labeled that Z and Y, I could now say that Y is going to be three fifths of the Z. And once I know either of them, I can solve for the other one. So if they gave me Y instead of giving me the Z, I could go backwards and do this the other way around and get bigger as opposed to getting smaller. Question. We're starting to work with the gravity works. We also don't need those books anymore. So, we want to make sure that we know how to make these proportional ones. I'm not super particular, or not proportion, sorry, proportional. I'm not super particular, but we need to make sure that we know how to flexibly move between fraction, decimal, and percent point. So, when we're talking about three fifths, that would obviously be our fraction representation. How do I figure out the percent form? What do we talk about all year? What percent means? How we do this, okay? Well, percent is how you the percent. If I can relate this to a per 100, I can solve my percentage. Can I here easily relate this to per 100? By what factor? 20. A factor of 20. So that means that my numerator is. 60, because we multiply by 20 to get there. What's up, Piper? Do some jumping jacks if you need. And our decimal form of that is exactly what we get from the percentage 60 hundredths, or reduced could be 6 tenths. We could do 0 0.6. So, I want you guys to try to answer couple of these problems down here, using that idea of make things easier, we should try to do these without a calculator. If at all possible, try to fight the urge to calculate. Nina, when you look at 90%, you're just walk of the drill. When you look at 90%, are you thinking use decimal or fraction, or what way are you going to process through this? So if we and of we know that of means multiply. So the decimal form of ninety percent, and that to you is the easiest way without a calculator to do this. No. So while we can think about the decimal form, it may not be the easiest. So we got percent, we got decimal. What's the fraction form of ninety percent? Nine out of hundred, is that the easiest way to talk about it? What would be? Nine out of ten. So the easy thing to do here is think about what is our portion size? What is our portion size? How, what do we break the 25 miles up into really? Tenths. 
right? We're talking, we have nine of the 10 total, because we've got nine out of 10, of the 25. So if I break up 25 into tenths, what's a tenth of 25? 2.5. 2 so I know that I have nine of those segments, of those sections. Nine, now we can do this with a calculator. Obviously most of the time you have a calculator. I just want to get you comfortable doing this without. So if I have nine sections, all of 2.5, I have maybe two pairs. What's 2.5 and 2.5 pairs? Five. How many pairs of that do we make? We make four of those pairs. We get 20, and then we have one left over. 22.5. Ooh, 8%. No, I don't like that. That's 8%. Belal. Oh, when you look at the 8% situation. Are you Belal? All right, Belal. What are you feeling? 8%. So you think about it in another form. Okay. Sorry, so I can divide them both by 4 and get 2 over 25. Awkward kind of. So can I use my base chunk of 10% like I did on the last one? Yeah. Yeah. Do I have less than that? So what I'm trying to get you guys to recognize is how to break up values and then put it back together more easily. 10% divide by 10, right? We have 7.5. Easy enough-ish, but I don't even have 10% or less. What about 1? Yeah, but I only have to Everybody write this down in your paper real quick. Just 8 over 100 times 75, I'm going to show you something. Might be mind blowing. What if I told you we can just as easily flip it? Well, not, not actually flip, but like move it so that instead of 8 over 100, we got 75 over 100 times 8. Because, especially if you start to think of money, If I have 8 times 7,500, think about those pairs that we can try to make. I got an even amount, right? 8 of them. If I pair up, 75 cents, 75 cents. 150. Eight, then if I pair that again, like double again, 3. Am I where I need to be yet, or do I need to double again? So we took that amount, we doubled it, then we doubled it, now we have to double again, and this just comes out to be 6. Sorry, that's a little bit of time changing that. Unacceptable. Now, 25%. There is one, well not, I was going to say one thing, one thing only. But there is one thing that should, should most definitely come into your head when you see 25%. Alex? Divide by four. Divide by four. Because 25% really means a fourth, and a fourth of anything is divided by four. And the easiest way to divide by four is chop in half and then chop in half. What's half of 144? No, one, 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 two, 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 one,
140 chopped in half is 70. Four chopped in half is two. Right? So, 72. Right? Then we chop that in half again. Careful. 36. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Oh, because otherwise you're not specifically clarifying that there are no of those values. So if you just wrote a number, wait, let me go back. So say we just wrote like my like ninety percent over here as 0.9. First off, that causes some issues if it's in the middle of a problem, like we're adding or subtracting, we don't have anything else. But then, did I forget to put my number in front of it? Is there like is it zero or is it something else? Or was I going to come back to it? Like I I haven't clarified really that we have no values over here, because the decimal point kind of breaks my number apart, right, from entire quantities and partial quantities. So we want to say we have no entire quantities and then this many partial quantities. It's not like a have to thing, but it's better. It's definitely better. So you fixed it, and then you're just like, you don't have to write the decimal. You don't have to. But you should. Well, you said you had a question? You good now? All right, 19. Say one out to dinner. Now, I will tell you, this is actually kind of low. A 15% tip is like mid range. Normally, you tip 20 if you had good service. So the bill was 38%. Now, I have been known to slap the phone out of someone's hand when they try to pull out their tip calculator. Because your phone, which first off, which was ranch for a moment, move, move first off, phone. your phone has a calculator. You don't need a separate app to calculate your tip. I know. You already know. have one. I'm okay, giving myself wait, worse headaches, so I have to stop. So, I could rant on that for a little bit longer, but the fact that your phone has a separate app drives me crazy. So, just say it's not. We can't do that here. So th because this is 15%. So, think this through with your partner. No calculators allowed. How are you going to help uh, Josia? Figure out. Their Maybe, yeah. No, you. Oh. I'm not mentally. Well, now, I'm not mentally stable. I just Also, if you leave a card open, so like you go out certain places, you just like open up a card, a tab. Yeah, and if you leave it open, they just automatically put the tip on. So 15%. If the first if the first thing we're looking at is all right, well just how is this represented as a fraction? Hopefully we all know 15% would be Thank you to the one person participating today. Oh, wow. Sorry. 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 And the decimal then would be 
Zero. We literally just had this conversation. Point one five. So now I could also re-represent this. Like I was waiting for somebody to be like, well, you could actually like make it three twentieths or something like interesting like that. I mean, sure, yeah, but so now hold on, because the next thing it asks us, does it make a difference which fraction form or what decimal or fraction versus decimal? Like in your mind, does it make a difference which we think about? You're gonna change how I do the math. I okay. So if I walk up to somebody on the street and I say, "Hey, what's 15 times 38?" They're probably gonna run away from me because neither of those numbers are that easy to deal with. 15 is kind of nice. It ends in a five. 38 really awkward, even though it's even. It's, it's fairly awkward. But what if I walked up to you on the street and said, "Hey, can you divide by 10?" Okay, probably right. Hopefully, what's 38 divided by 10? 3.8. This is what I do when I go out to eat. Can I divide that in half? Yeah. Yeah. Now, hold it. Make your life easier. Separate your money into three dollars and eighty cents. Half of three dollars. Buck fifty. Half of eighty. By the way, this is not right. It's money. It has to have two decimal places. Money has to have two decimal places. <laughs> so now, hold up. Why did I do what I did? Why did I ask you those questions? Why? Yeah, if I want 15%, I just want the 10% and the 5%. Yeah, I just multiply the five percent. 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 I Thinking that you may oh, have used right that. Right. Now, in my mind, to get to 5%, I'm going to get to 10% first. Right? Like, I'm going to work my way to 5%. At least, like, for me, I'm going to think about 10% before I ever get to 5%. And that's why I then just add it. It's easier. It's just to me, it's easier. But that way will totally work. Rachel, if you missed it, said, all I did was took the 5% and tripled it. Is what she did to solve. Let me find the 5 7. 5 7 is right. So then, last thing to figure out what the bill total would be. Oh, uh, add the two things. Add that to the 38. Now, here's the other thing that most people don't realize, or it depends on who you ask. The tip amount that you calculate should be based off the subtotal before tax ever happened. So if this $38 was what the bill actually was, she's tipping a bit more than what she needs to. Like, if you tip off that, because the, the subtotal on like a $38 bill was probably only like $30, $32. Like, tax makes up a decent amount of your bill. Um, yeah, it was like $33 probably. You end up with a bill of like $38. Because tax. Because Uncle Sam wants their cut. Um, how could I use this to help if they change their mind and decide to tip 20%, then? You could either add 5% on to the 15%. Kick in another 5%. Yeah. Or you could just kind of figure out, okay, I can take 10% multiplied by 2, 10% yeah. divided by 5, 5% multiplied by 4. So either way that I take, if I think about 10% doubled or adding on another 5%, 20% here then would be how much money? Um, it'd be 7.6. 7.60, right? right? Yep. So, hang on for a second. In your mind, and like you're you're not a typical physician and you don't pay the bill when you go out to eat, but let's say that I'm the employee. Right? Put, put your mind into the state of you're the person getting the tips. You think you gave them great service. 
everything they wanted. Their water was always filled. They had their server. And and you, like, as the person paying, have to decide, am I going to pay 15% or 20% or what percent do I tip? Because that's my choice. The server, who is a tippable position, might only make $3 an hour. That might literally be the pay that they get because they get tips on top of that. Do you think the difference of almost $2 would make a decent difference when you think that every person tipping has to make this choice. Yeah. Yeah. Then, and th this is totally a tangent from our lesson, then think, does it really impact you that much to give them an extra $2? Like, will you really miss that $2? Can you not go buy coffee tomorrow or whatever else? So just while I had the opportunity to be on a soapbox, when you get in that position of being the person tipping, Hopefully, you all work a job where you will get tips so you can understand this. Think about it doesn't make a big difference for me to up what I pay by a dollar or two, but it'll make a big difference to that server, especially if every single person does that all day long. That's going to make their bill or like their pay a lot different than if every person chose 15% versus 20%. So that's where that difference comes in. All right, let's try... Isaiah wants to calculate 35% off. Okay, so this is happening to our training course. What if someone is like waiting on you and then you leave and leave a tip, but a different person comes to clean off the table? Yeah, they normally have a system in place at the restaurant to figure out how that works. Like they'll split or whatever else. Or like if the people um, cleaning the tables don't normally get tips, so they actually get paid more. So like if I'm a busser, the person that cleans the tables, I might get paid eight dollars an hour. Whereas if you're the server, you only get three bucks an hour, but you get tips. I don't get tips because I'm just washing dishes. I know what I gotta do. You gotta be polite to people, right? That's why oh, that's like, the typical right. position versus yeah. Speaking of what Andy said, when my parents used to work at a TV, like they um, there was this one person. That hey guys, we can't just choose to randomly have our own conversation. We can either let Will tell a story. Or we can all move on to the next problem, but we can't just be like, oh, my classmate's talking. Screw it. I'll talk to my friend. Like, come on. You're almost in eighth grade. That is just flat out rude. You should know that by now. Sorry, continue. I couldn't hear you. I don't remember which parent it was, but one of them, um, when they would work at a restaurant, there was this one really like cool boy that was nice to was nice to like hang out to her, but no one really liked her. Yeah. She would steal the tips off of other people's Oh uh, yeah. That's what you do so, Isaiah, oh, and here's the last thing while we're talking about tips. Here's the kicker. The tip bless you on a credit card, and it goes in like they know, like Uncle Sam knows that you know your tip. Bless you. You pay taxes on your tips. If it's, if it's in your paycheck, because if somebody tips on a credit card, it goes in your paycheck, you pay taxes on that. So, you did the service, you brought their food, you did everything, Uncle Sam gets a piece of it. Like, oh my god. Okay, I'm I'm disappointed. Uncle Sam is the government. But, did you guys not know? I know. Uncle no. Sam no. is like the dude in the top hat and like, you no, want you. Want you. Oh. He is the, hey, the picture you? of the American government. Uncle yeah. Sam is what I'm you want to Sorry, so that should have been a point of clarification. If I talk about Uncle Sam, I mean the government. So Uncle I Sam gets a piece. Yeah. All right. We got ten minutes. We got to wrap up a couple of oh. problems. No. Okay. You when we talk about discounts, which hopefully you don't pay full price because full price is for suckers, but Isaiah is going to get thirty-five percent discount on this new uh, computer game. So he was deciding. Should I use the 35 over 100 as my multiplier to do this? So, excuse me, he thinks he's going to use that to calculate the new price of the game. Is, excuse me, is there an easy way to do this? So, remember, I'm here to make your life easy. I'm here to help you pick the best options. So, talk to your partner for a minute. Is Isaiah doing the right thing, or is there any easier way to equal place this problem? I mean, easiest in general. Eventually, we find out that it's 40 hours. Right. Yeah. 
So we could either just put numbers in front of you and say, do this 20 times over, or we can give you some situations that are a bit more interesting. Through years and years of research, we realized just putting pages full of numbers in front of kids doesn't work that well. Because you have to read a situation that promotes your literacy, and it makes you pick out what matters in the problem. So if you want to go back 20 years in time, you'll probably have pages of just numbers and not, like, you know what I mean? Not fun. Just like, let yourself be okay with the fact that these situations are all made up. Aside from the facts that it gives you, those are kind of cool, like animal facts, bug facts. Um, that stuff in your book is real. Isaiah wants, gets 35% off on sale. 3500 as a scale factor, he's going to multiply with that because scale factors we multiply with. Does that get him the new price? So this math would actually get him the amount of discount. I agree, but is there any easier way from the from the get go that we could do a multiplication and find the new price? Move here. What is that? That's the, uh, that's the leftover price. And then you add to the discount. If what we are trying to determine is how much he will pay, he's going to pay 65%. Because if he gets 35 off, then he's left with 65 Left. So now, hold up. Now, we can still use our mental math to break this down real easily. We have a chunk that we need to make that is 65%, right? What is a very easy way to start working there? And don't say 10%. Five. 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 Alex? Uh, we're going to need that, but I wouldn't go there quite yet. I agree that we're... So we know the 100%, right? So I'm going to make up 
What if I take my 65 and I break it apart into 50, 10, 5? What is 50% here? 20 bucks, that's easy, right? Because 50% is a half. That's an easy piece. Then 10%, I could have either gone from the 40, or if you were at 50%, you could go from the 50% down to 10. This gives me $4. Oh, it's Which means 5% will be. And we get $26. More people to get there. You have to have weight to stop. Your brain doesn't work if there's no weight to stop. It's not yours. I, I was waiting for other brains to stop. Because other people were still standing. All standing for Yo, does this make sense? No. Now, did I need to use the 50? No. We could have used 20% and done triple and then done a 5. We could have gone straight to 5%. And then figured out how many 5% make up 65. Wait. Yeah. So if if we go down to 5%, we take the Alex way, how many 5% are in 65? 13, right? Just take this times 13. 26. So that so. And now Bilal is arguing that Alex's way is easier than my way. Alex's way would go to 5%, and then we can multiply by 13. My way, I, I like adding. It's just a new thing. It's not right versus wrong. It's easier versus not as easy. Exactly. But it's, it's easier to us more than it is yeah. to you. Yeah, like just like that. And that's, up to, that's fine. I don't oh, care if you take a different route. I'm, I'm just trying to sure make sure that you think through the so one that I specifically want you to think about. Our brains are so important. So, so the idea of break it down to one portion and multiply that is really easy. We've been doing that for a while. The idea of break down the different portions to look at the different representations is you're pushing another skill set. So all the time we got this.